Hey, this is Mike from Photobooth Solutions, and I want to give you a quick overview of some of the new features coming in Social Booth 2.0. First thing you notice is the general tab has been uh, reorganized a bit, and it now leads with the events. And most importantly, you're able to load and save events, which will allow you to um, set up multiple events in advance and have uh, operators load them on site without having to set them up uh, right there. There's also a, a reset to defaults button. So if you have any, um, any problems and you can't figure out a particular setting that's causing it, you can load uh, to the program defaults without having to uninstall and reinstall. Uh, in the camera setup area, you'll notice there's now external flash mode, which will essentially just increase the exposure of the live view. You can use this if you're using external flashes, and if the live view is too dark, it'll boost, uh, boost the exposure. You can also save the photos to the SD card as well as um, to the camera as a normal operation. And also down here in the program setup, you'll notice there's an admin password area now. So you can set a password and so when the program starts, operators won't be able to get into the settings. Um, they'll only be able to select uh, events to load. And um, if they have the password, they can always get back into the settings to make any changes. In the display tab, you notice there's now a basic and advanced mode. Advanced mode is uh, what we're used to seeing where each screen uh, can be individually uh, assigned its own uh, file. The basic screen uh, cleans this up a bit and allows you to actually just assign folders that have uh, your files in them so you don't have to individually assign the screens. So as an example, I have a folder full of um, red screens, same file names, but they're all just red. And if I select that in the software, I'm going to now have a red interface. You can do the same thing with the audio and assign different folders as well. In the advanced mode, you'll see that there are checkboxes now next to the capture and review screens. What this allows you to do is have multiple capture and review screens for each shot. If we use the capture as an example, the standard capture background is BG Capture. But you'll see I have a BG Capture dash 2, dash 3, and dash 4. So if you create different screens, you're going to have different sayings for each shot. Same thing works for the audio files. I have audio capture 2, 3, 4. You can do the same thing with the review screens. At the bottom of this tab, you'll see the layout selection screen. If we take a look, this allows users to select which layout template they'd like. As an example, I have a single shot or a strip. The way this works when you enable it is based on hotspots. So I would define a hotspot for the single shot and I would define a hotspot for the strip. You could also decide where you want to show the layout selection screen if it's before or after instead of the start screen. You have the option to add six different hotspots to this screen. So you could have the user select from six different templates. You can also assign entire settings files instead of just presets. This would allow you to do things like language selection. So you could swap out all the backgrounds when the user clicks on the hotspot. Photos tab has gone through a bit of a change as well. It all has a quick select button and has a ton more template layout selections to use as defaults. These all come pre-configured with the shot numbers and the coordinates. If you go into the edit screen, this has changed a bit as well. The alpha transparency and overlay image was a bit confusing as it was really just two ways to accomplish the same thing. So I've replaced it with just the overlay image and this allows you to overlay a photo or transparent PNG on top of the photos whereas the background image is what the photos go on top of themselves. So we'll see as an example, I have an overlay example here. And you'll see I have a background.jpg and overlay.png. If I disable the overlay, you'll see I'm just putting my photos on the background. If I enable the overlay, you'll see this overlay PNG gets placed on top of those photos. So this allows you to easily add logos to a predefined template. 
For example, let's use a photo strip layout. So if I don't want a background file and I just want something plain and white, I can go in and select the blank template and I'll select an overlay image. You can see I have a Go Eagles logo. So if I'm doing another event and I want the same exact layout, but I just want to swap out the logo, and I have Go Broncos. So filters have moved into their own tab, and a very popular request has been the ability to um, individually select which filters are used. So you can now turn off any of the vintage filters and even sepia, and you can just have color in black and white. Now, Some people like to have the user select whether they want color or black and white before the session. The way you can do that is just enable the color and save that as its own event. Then you could create another event that just enables black and white. You could use the layout selection screen. And instead of loading a template preset, you could load a settings file. Animated GIFs have their own tab now too. Basically, the only addition here is there is a GIF only mode, so you can run the software as an animated GIF only booth. A big change in the video tab, you'll notice you now have the selection to be able to choose between DSLR or webcam for your video. You also notice that the Facebook has been combined. User Facebook and Client Facebook are now in the same tab. And this has made some room for Pinterest. Uh, which has been in Photo Booth Connected for a while, and now it is available in Social Booth. So now you're able to share to email, Facebook, Twitter, SMS, or Pinterest. In Twitter, there's a new feature as well, and there's a client Twitter where you can log in and have all the photos automatically uploaded to a single uh, client Twitter account. And this allows you to do um, pretty much exactly what you've seen with the Twitter walls, if you've seen them on the Grammys or, um, or the Oscars. And um, people can basically take a photo and have it automatically go to your client's Twitter feed. Surveys also have a new feature, and that's the addition of multiple choice questions. You can have uh, four different answers, and so now you're able, you're able to have yes-no questions, fill in the blanks, or multiple choice. And something else that's not in the, the settings, but in green screen, uh, you can now do the green screen removal with uh, portrait uh, layout photos as well. So that's a quick overview of what's to come. It's a few more things in the works, um, but these are the main features, and um, hopefully you guys like them.